What's up, YouTube? We're here in Dublin at the Dunsink Observatory. Way back on October 16th in 1843, a mathematician, Sir William Rowan Hamilton, and his wife left from here on a walk into the city. Hannah and I are going to go on that walk today. Much of Hamilton's early career was as a physicist in the field of geometrical optics. In fact, a lot of his work contributed to modern day physical theories like classical field theory, electromagnetism relating to light, and even a reformation of Newtonian mechanics, which is now called Hamiltonian mechanics. When he was 22, he was encouraged by a friend to be a candidate for a position at Trinity College, which basically amounts to director of astronomy. When he was selected for the position, he took up residence at Dunsink Observatory, where he lived for the rest of his life. He was tasked with, in that position with benefiting science as much as he could, and so he shifted away from physics and became a pure mathematician. One of the major mathematical problems that Hamilton tried to solve was that of extending the algebra of complex numbers to higher spatial dimensions. A lot of what he needed to key in on was figuring out how to multiply triplets meaningfully. Keep in mind this was before vectors and matrices and all that were figured out in common practice. The problem became so prevalent in Hamilton's life that when he would go downstairs in the morning, both of his sons would ask him, well, dad, have you figured out how to multiply triplets? To which he would simply reply, no, I have not. And that brings us here to this bridge, Broom Bridge, the end of our very long walk. The story goes that Hamilton and his wife were walking across this bridge on their way to Dublin when Hamilton was struck with a moment of insight. He figured out how to solve his problem. And the answer was not to multiply triplet pairs, but to add a fourth dimension and make new numbers, which he called quaternions. He inscribed his fundamental formula for quaternion multiplication onto this bridge. The original inscription is no longer there, but there's a commemorative plaque for it, marking his moment of insight. When Hamilton first introduced his idea of quaternions, it was faced with a lot of backlash from the mathematics community. You see, Quaternion multiplication was one of the first non-commutative operations introduced in mathematics, and a lot of people seemed to think it just muddied the waters. It wasn't until later that quaternions were fully realized, when it was understood that they can succinctly represent rotations in three dimensions. You see quaternions used all the time nowadays in applications like computer graphics and tracking the rotation of a spacecraft in space. We've even seen extensions of quaternions to higher spatial dimensions, like eight-dimensional numbers called octonians and 16-dimensional numbers called sedenians. And so, I did it. I am here. I made the pilgrimage and I dragged Hannah along with me all the way from Dunsink Observatory to Broom Bridge. This has been on my bucket list for a really long time, ever since I was a kid. And I really like this story for a couple of reasons. The first one is that it gives me a spatial tie to the world of mathematics. Now I really like math, but my relationship with the, with the subject has always been as a learner and as a user. I'm not producing mathematical results or producing insights. But here I'm seated in the general vicinity of where somebody understood a mathematical concept for the first time. And that's amazing to me. I don't really feel that with other mathematicians. But this is a good one. And especially useful because I hope to be using quaternions soon. I've been delving into computer graphics pretty heavily, but hopefully I'll get there. The second reason is that it's just inspiring to me that inspiration or insight can strike at any moment. And I, I, I better be like Hamilton. I better scrawl it on the nearest bridge or whatever, lest I forget it. And that's about it.